This is lesson 10.4 and 10.5's homework assignment. And we are going to be solving by a linear combination. So we're going to be looking for the ordered pair that solves both of the given equations. Solving a system, we've used substitution and graphing so far. So linear combination, we're going to combine the two equations together. And what, what is that going to do for us? We're going to set it up, if it's not already set up, so that something cancels out in terms of one of the variables, leaving us just one to solve for. And then once we solve for that, we can go back, plug in that answer, and solve for the other variable. So as we look at number one, what we have to do before we start trying to combine these two equations together is make sure something is going to cancel if we just go ahead and add the two straight down. And because we have a positive three and a negative three, when I add those together, they will eliminate and make a zero. So I'm not even going to write the zero X, just so there's no reason to. Basically, these are going to cancel out. And all I have to do is bring everything else down. So 11 Y and 5 Y is going to be a 16 Y. And 15 plus negative 15, just like the three and negative three, will cancel. Now, because that's the only thing on this side of the equal sign, I do need to fill that then with a zero. And to finish this off, I do need to get y by itself, so technically I am still dividing by 16, even though I should know the answer is going to be 0. So my y is 0. And again, we're looking for the ordered pair, the x and the y values, that when I plug them into both of these equations, it will work. And so I need to go find x now. So you can use either one of these equations, and you will still get the same answer. So just taking a quick glance at them, I see one with all positives and one with a couple negatives. So personally, I'm always going to go for the one with the positives. But again, you can plug the zero into either one of these equations. You will get the same answer for x. So I'm going to go ahead and take the first one. One mistake that a lot of students will make is they'll just, not on purpose, but they'll just plug the zero in for x instead of y or vice versa. Sometimes you're going to have y after the first step like we do. Sometimes you're going to have x. So you do need to just be careful. We have y right now. So that's where we're going to plug it in and we're going to solve for x. So rewriting the first equation, but substituting in now for the y value. So it's going to be 11 times 0 instead of the y, which is going to just eliminate because that's 0. So all I have left is 3x equals 15 divided by 3, x equals 5. And my final answer, you're going to give it as an ordered pair, x first. So 5 comma 0. So question two, again, before I start adding, I need to make sure something's going to cancel. And sure enough, the negative 4 and the 4 will cancel. So those are going to go away when I add them together. 10 and negative 11. Okay, or you can just read it straight down like 10 minus 11, whatever's going to work for you. That's going to be a negative 1. Why? And 6 minus 5 or 6 plus negative 5 is positive 1. And I do need to get rid of this negative in front of the y. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. You could also multiply by negative 1. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So y equals negative 1. Going back to either one here, if I were to plug into this, I need to think of like this, like a negative 11 times a negative 1. That would become a plus 11. Because of that confusion there, I, as soon as I see I have a, the possibility of plugging in to a positive number multiplied by the negative, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But again, either one is fine. So I have negative 4x plus, now I plug in for my y, 10 times negative 1 equals 6. So it's going to say plus negative 10 because 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. So you can either write plus negative 10 or minus 10 either way. I'm always going to simplify as much as possible. So instead of plus a negative, I'm just going to write minus like we always do. And now I just want to go ahead and solve for x. So plus 10, left with negative 4x equals 16, divide by negative 4. And so x is negative 4. Final answer, negative 4, negative 1. Okay, so number three, I do see that I'm going to have my x's eliminate, but I also see that my y's are going to eliminate. 
And so this is going to be a special case. Everything's going to clear out on this side. So since the X is clear out and the Y is clear out, I do need to fill the space with a zero. I have to have something there. And then on the right side, I'm going to get three. So once all the variables are eliminated, I know it's either a no solution or it's going to be an infinite number of solutions. And so I need to just follow everything through and see if what's remaining is a true statement or not a true statement. So zero obviously does not equal three. And so you can put the no solution sign or just write out no solution. Okay, looking at number four, I see my X's will cancel because I have 13 and negative 13. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those together and cancel it. Negative five and 14 is gonna be a nine Y. And negative 23 and 41 is gonna be a positive 18. So I'm going to divide and y equals 2. Going back to either one, sometimes students are confused when they have to multiply here by the negative, but it really doesn't matter. It's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and just plug into that one. So 13x minus 5 times 2. So it's 13x minus 10. I'm going to go ahead and add 10. So I'm left with 13x. This is going to get me negative 13. So when I do divide, I am going to get negative 1. Final answer, negative 1 for x, 2 for y. All right, so for number 5, when I first take a glance at it, it looks like my y's are set up to cancel, but they're both negative right now. So if I put a negative seven and a negative seven together, I'm gonna to get negative 14. I need to get a zero. So what I need to do is multiply this entire equation here by negative one so that it becomes a positive seven. And then that will change that. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and put this in parentheses, multiply by negative one and rewrite it. But since it is going to be as simple as just changing all the signs when you multiply by a negative, I'm just gonna go ahead and write negative 7x because that's what I would get. This would become a positive 7y and this would become a positive 21. Okay, so what I actually did mathematically was multiply this entire equation by negative 1, okay, which will not change the validity of the equation. It is still going to maintain its equality. We can always, everything we do is dividing on both sides, adding on both sides. So as long as we do the same thing on both sides of the equation, we maintain the validity of this. So we multiplied by negative one on the left and the right. So now I'm set up to cancel. My y's will eliminate negative seven, positive seven, go away. My x's, if I add three and negative seven, that's a negative four x. And then on this side, when I add those together, that's 40. So dividing by negative four, I get X equals negative 10. So taking a look, going back to the original. So you wouldn't necessarily want to go back to this one with all of the changes in it. You'd want to go back to the original original. And since it could be a little confusing to go back to that, since we made all these changes, let's just go back to this one. Now, so far, those first four questions, we always solved for Y and went back and plugged in for Y. We solve for x here, okay? So we need to make sure we go back and plug in for x. So it's gonna be three times negative 10 minus seven y equals 19. So we're gonna go ahead and solve for y now. So that's negative 30. I wanna eliminate everything on the same side as the variable. So the negative 30 has gotta go first. So I'm going to add 30 because negative 30 plus 30 is zero. And when you do that, you need to make sure the minus seven Y comes down as negative seven Y. When I go ahead and add 30 to 19, I have 49 and I'm gonna divide by negative seven and I will get negative seven. And when you write your ordered pair, just make sure you have it in the right order, X first. So negative 10, negative seven. Okay, number six, just like this one, the numbers are good. I have six and six, but they're both negative. I need one negative, one positive. 
So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this whole thing here by negative 1. So I'm going to get negative 2. I'm going to get positive 6. And multiplying 0 by a 1 is still going to be a 0. Positive or negative doesn't matter. It's still 0. And so my 6s will cancel now because I have 1 negative, 1 positive. 4 minus 2x or 4 plus negative 2x, however you want to think about it, is a positive 2x. Divide by 2 and x is 12. So again, I recommend in this situation, if you've made changes to 1, go back to the other one. Plugging in for x, so it's going to be 4 times 12. So that's 48. So now to get rid of this 48, it's a positive 48. I need to get it to 0. So I am minusing 48. Students always struggle with this because they see the minus in front of the 6, and they want to apply that to how they're going to get rid of the 48. But that stays with the 6. Okay, we're just looking at is this a positive 48 or negative 48, and then doing what we got to do to get it to 0. It's positive, so we're minusing 48. Of course, we do it on both sides. And when it goes away, the minus stays with the 6y like a negative. 24 minus 48 is going to be a negative 24. And when I divide by negative 6, I will get a positive 4. So my final answer is 12 comma 4. All right, now number 7. As I look at everything here, I do not have any numbers that are set up to cancel or even close to cancel yet because I don't even have the same number where maybe we can just change a positive or a negative to make it work. Okay, so I can't just make these negative or just make something positive and create something that cancels. But what I do see is that I can make a 9 into an 18, which will cancel it. I can't necessarily make a 9 into a 12. Now, you can't always turn one number into the other, and we'll get to problems like that in a second. But for this one, I can make 9 into 18 very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 2. Now, you do need to take into consideration the positive and negative. What do we want this to turn out to be? So since this one's negative, I want this one to be positive, so they cancel. So multiplying by positive 2 is the correct thing to do. So very carefully, make sure everything gets multiplied by the 2. So I'm going to get an 18x plus 18y. 2 times 0 is just 0. So when I go ahead and run this, you want to ignore this middle part because we've changed it. So we're going from the first one to this one, this new one. The reason is the negative 18 and the positive 18 will cancel. So we're adding straight down. So a negative 12 and an 18, that is a 6x. The y's canceled, negative 18, positive 18, and I do get 0 over here. So divide by 6, x is 0. I'm going to go back and now plug that in. Now, you do want to go back to one of the originals, not the one that you changed. But since we haven't really crossed anything out here, it's still clearly visible. Perfectly fine to go back to this one. And since there's so many negatives and minuses here, I would highly recommend going back to that one. So I'm going to plug into the 9x plus 9y equation. 0 goes in for x, so it's 9 times 0 plus 9y equals 0. Since it's times 0, it goes away. 9y equals 0, technically dividing by 9, but y equals 0. Now that seems weird. We don't normally get answers like that. But remember, 0, 0 is a point on a graph. It's the origin. And so if we did go ahead and graph these two equations, and we looked at where do they intersect, they're going to intersect perfectly on the origin. And that's the only point, x and y values, that's going to make both of these equations true. All right, number 8. Don't see any numbers lined up yet that are going to cancel, but I do see an 8, which I can turn into a 16. I'm going to need it to be a negative 16 to cancel with this positive 16. Now it's already a negative 8, so that's good. So I don't need to change the sign of it. All I need to do is multiply it by 2, so it does become a negative 16. And again, the, one of the big mistakes is people forget to multiply every single number by whatever this is out here. So this is by 2. 
So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the negative 12 by 2. That's negative 24x. I'm going to multiply the negative 8 and get negative 16y, which is what I wanted. Now I have something that cancels. And then for whatever reason, this is the one, of course, everybody forgets. I've got to multiply this one as well. So that's negative 32. So you may notice we're going to get a cancel over here as well. All right, so starting right here, this is going to be a negative 11x. The 16y and the negative 16y cancel. 32 and a negative 32 cancel, so I have to fill that spot with a 0. So x is going to be 0. And now I need to go plug that in. Again, this one has all these negatives. I, I, could, I can use it. It's going to work. But you're much more likely to make a mistake. Pick the one with the positives. So I'm plugging in for x. Always be careful. Double check. So it's 13 times 0. So that goes away. So it's 16y equals 32 divided by 16. y equals 2. So my final answer is 0, comma 2. Okay, number 9. So I don't have any numbers that cancel right off the bat. And again, I don't really care about these. I'm really looking at my variables. Do I have anything that will cancel out if I add them or combine them? I also can't multiply these smaller numbers to create the bigger numbers, at least not by a whole number, right? You could, you could multiply by a decimal and get it there, but we're just looking at whole numbers. So what we have to do now is we have to multiply both equations by something. Each one can be by a different number so that we do create something that cancels. Now, it's kind of like finding a common denominator. You can multiply them by each other, and that will work. And in this case, that is probably the best scenario. But there are times you're going to multiply things by something smaller. It doesn't have to be by each other. And we can look at those. But for this specific one, I know that if I multiply this equation by 9, and I multiply this one by 2, I'm going to get an 18 over here. I'm going to get an 18 over here. This one's already negative, so it'll stay, and this one's already positive, so it'll stay, so that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 9, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 2. And again, one more time, the reason I'm choosing those numbers is because 9 times 2 is 18, and 2 times 9 is 18. So I'm going to get an 18 for both of my y's, one of them negative, one of them positive, they will cancel. So I still have to multiply everything else, and that's going to help me find the answers that I need. But specifically, I'm choosing these numbers to multiply by, so I do set up something that's going to cancel. Okay, so let's make sure we got these numbers. So we're going to do 9 times 22, which is 198, and it's negative. 9 times the 2 is going to be a negative 18y. And then 9 times the 2 here is positive 18. Now here on the bottom, 2 times 99 is 198x. 2 times the 9 is positive 18y, which is what I wanted. Now I have something that cancels. And then here I have a negative 18. And so you can start to see this is setting up a little goofy, right? Everything's the same numbers, but they are all opposites. So my x's will cancel because one's negative, one's positive. My y's will cancel, one's negative, one's positive. And my numbers over here will cancel, one's negative, one's positive. So when everything cancels, you do need to fill the space with a zero. And when all of your x's and y's cancel, you know it's a special case. It's either no solution or all real numbers. You have to check and see, does this make sense? And it does. Zero does equal zero. That is a true statement. And so this means there are infinite solutions. And again, what that actually means is if I graph these two, they're actually the same line. They sit right on top of each other. So of course, any ordered pair that you pick from one of them will work on the other because the lines are sitting right on top of each other. So there's an infinite number of possibilities. Now, we do want to make sure we don't write all real numbers because that's saying you can pick any number in the world. 
And that is not what we're saying here. We're talking about ordered pairs, first of all. We're not talking about one single number that you can choose. There's an infinite number of these, but it also doesn't mean that everything is on that. So think about a line on a graph and another line on top of it. It doesn't mean you can pick any point in the world and it's going to work for both of them. But there's an infinite number of solutions that will work for both of them because those lines go on forever. Okay, but not every combination in the whole world works. But any ordered pair that does work for one is going to work for the other. Okay, so there is a different bet difference between infinite solutions and all real numbers. This is infinite solutions. All right, number 10. Looking at these, okay, I don't see anything where I can just cancel, and I don't see anything where I can multiply one to make the other. I can make the two into an eight, but that doesn't help me. This is X's and this is Y's. They're not gonna be combined. So it doesn't matter if those numbers match up. It has to be the numbers that are the coefficients to the same variable. So I've got a couple options here, and you always have a couple options. I can make my y's cancel by multiplying them by each other. A 9 and an 8, I'm going to get a 72 and a negative 72, and they will cancel. Or I can multiply these by 2 and 13, and I'll get a 26 and a 26, and those will cancel. Now, if I do decide to do that, I need to make sure one of these does turn out to be negative. Let's go ahead and just do that. So this one's going to get multiplied by 2. This one's going to get multiplied by 13. So when I do that, I have 26 here, and I have 26 here. But if I go ahead and just run these numbers right now the way I have it set up, I'm going to get a positive 26 and a positive 26, and neither one of those is going to cancel. You're just going to end up adding them together, which is not what we want. We need them to cancel one positive, one negative. So I need to make one of these negative. It doesn't matter which one. So I can make this a negative 2 to create that, or I can make this a negative 13 to create that. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and just make the negative on the 13, but you could have done it on the 2. All right, so distributing here, I'm going to get a 26x. I'm going to get a negative 16y, and I'm going to get a positive 4. Now when I multiply by the negative 13, I get negative 26x. That's what I wanted. The whole reason I chose these numbers was to create a positive 26 and a negative 26. So they cancel. 13 times 9 is 117. So that's going to be a negative 117y. And 13 times 31 is 403. So that's a negative 403. Okay, I am now set up to cancel. These will go away. Positive 26, negative 26, cancel. I need to combine my negative 16 and my negative 117. That's negative 133y. And when I combine a negative 403 and a positive 4, I get a negative 300 and 99, we're going to divide. Two negatives will make a positive, and this does perfectly go in three times. So my y is 3. Now when I go back to solve for the other variable, which in this case is x, go back to one of the originals. Don't go back to here if you've made a mistake. Okay, You're going to continue your mistake. Let's go back up here to the originals. So just taking a look at them, I'm going to pick the one with all the positives in it, but not that big a deal either way. So I'm going with this one. So 2x plus, plugging in for y now, 9 times 3 equals 31. So 2x, this is 27 minus 27 and divide x equals 2. So final answer, x comma y, 2 comma 3. All right, on the back, we are using substitution. So instead of trying to cancel things by combining the two equations, we are going to substitute in. Eventually, you want to be able to choose the best option out of these. They all work. You can always use substitution. You can always use linear combination, but sometimes 
one is better than the other. Since these are already in y equals form, it's definitely easier to use substitution. So since y equals this whole thing, I can just go ahead and plug directly in. So y equals this, which means in the other equation, I can change y to this. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there, negative 5x plus 9 substitutes in for y, and I have 8x plus 22 on the other side. Solving this out, I have an x on both sides. Eliminating the smaller of the two would be the negative, so I'm going to add 5x to cancel negative 5x, leaving me 9 on this side, 13x, and 22. Get the x by itself at this point, so I'm going to minus 22 here. This is going to leave me a negative 13. So when I divide by positive 13, x is negative 1. Okay, so if I'm going to go back up here now, I'm going to plug in. It doesn't matter which one. Since I see this has a negative, I want to multiply it by a negative to make a positive. I'm going to choose that one, but you don't have to. So it's negative 5 times negative 1 plus 9. So this becomes a positive 5 plus 9. And so my y value is 14. Final answer, x comma y, negative 1, 14. So number 12, again, already in y equals form, so I'm just going to go ahead and substitute this in. Check out my x's. 4 is the smaller of the two, so I'm going to eliminate it. Add 8, which leaves me just 3x. And on this side, since these cancel, 0. So dividing by that is going to still give me 0. So my x is 0. And going up top, pick either one. Plug in for x. So 7 times 0 just eliminates, leaving me a minus 8 or a negative 8, which is my answer. So x comma y is 0, negative 8. All right, 13. Here's my y equals negative 5x plus 32. Since that's what y is equal to, I can substitute it directly into the other equation for that variable, so for y. I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. And instead of writing 2 times y, I'm going to write 2 times what y is equal to. And then solve this all the way out. So my first step is going to be to distribute. So I'm going to leave this negative 10x alone. When I distribute this, it is a negative 2 times both of them. So negative 2 times negative 5 is positive. So I write plus. Everyone wants to just bring down that minus sign. But a negative times a negative is a positive. 10x, multiply here, negative times positive is negative 64. I go ahead and combine these, they're on the same side of the equal sign, so I just combine it, and a negative 10 and a positive 10, when you combine them, is just 0, so they cancel, leaving me negative 64 equals negative 64, true statement, and so this is infinite number of solutions. All right, and 14. Y is equal to this whole expression. So I can go ahead and plug that whole expression in for the Y in the other equation. So I have 4X plus 7 times negative 3X plus 22. First step is to distribute, so leave the 4X alone. This is a positive times a negative, so I'm going to get a negative 21X. 7 times 22 is a positive 154. First step would be to combine your x's. They're on the same side, so you just put them together. We're not minusing anything from both sides, adding on both sides. We're just working on this side and combining those together. So that's going to be a negative 17x. 
Now that I'm down to just one variable, get it by itself, minus 154 on both sides. So 18 minus 154 is negative 136. And I'm going to divide that by negative 17 to get my x value. So negative 136 divided by negative 17 is positive 8. And that's what I'm going to go back and plug in and solve. So I'm going to choose the first one since it's in y equals form. Negative 3 times the 8 plus 22. So that's negative 24 plus 22, and that's negative 2. So my final answer is 8, negative 2. All right, I'm going to solve by graphing here at the bottom. So remember, if you were given these two equations, you could get one of these in x equals or y equals form and solve by substitution like we've been doing. You can also use elimination, okay? But here we have a 3 and a 3, so we would have to make one of these negative, but then you could do it that way. But we're specifically going to make sure we understand how to do it by graphing here. So to put these on the graph, I need them in y equals mx plus b form. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and turn both of these into y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to bring this down. And I'm going to get y by itself, so I need x on the other side. So I'm going to subtract the x to the other side, so I'm left with 3y. I'm going to put this in y equals mx plus b form, so I'm going to put the x up front. The minus is like a negative, the positive is like a plus, so I'm dividing by 3. So for my first equation, I'm going to have a negative 10 thirds slope and a positive 3 intercept, which puts me right here to start. That's my intercept, and i got to go down 10 over 3. So down 3 gets me to here, down another 7 to make it 10, and then over 3. And trying to go the other direction, up 10, I'm going to go off my graph. So these are my only two points that I can fit. And my other equation, I need to get y by itself. So I have it in y equals mx plus b form, giving me my slope and my intercept. So I need x on the other side. I'm going to subtract it. Up with 3y, negative x, negative 18, dividing by 3, all the way across. So this is like a negative 1, so it's negative 1 third x. You can leave it as negative x over 3 as long as you know what that means for the slope. It's negative 1 over 3, down 1 over 3. This is still going to be negative, and that is 6. So I'm starting at negative 6. That is my intercept. And going down 1 over 3, down 1 over 3, and you can see that's going to hit right there. Down 1 over 1, 2, Three. And for this question, that's enough because we're just looking to see where do these two lines cross. And so I'm just lining up my x and my y values. That's a 3 and a negative 7. And that is my solution. So again, if you went ahead and you turned this all negative to make it a negative 3, and you ran this through using combination and canceling out your y's, solving for x, you would get the 3, and you go back and you plug it in, and you get the negative 7. Okay, they're all going to work. They're just different strategies. Some people like graphing better. Some people like the algebra side better. But it's important to see the connection between all of them. They all mean the same thing. It's the point where these two lines cross. It's the only point that makes both of these true. Again, every single point on this line makes this equation true. And every single point on this line makes this one true. If you plugged in the x and the y, both sides would come out equal. But this is the only point, 3, negative 7, that when you plug the x and the y value into both of these equations, they still will remain true. All right, last one. Let's knock it out. 
So I need to get this in y equals mx plus b form to get this on the graph. So move your x. When you eliminate it, make sure that this comes down as a negative 3y. Oops. Can't combine those, right? One's an x, one's not. Almost made a silly mistake. So these stay separate, of course. So it's negative 11x minus 21. I'm now going to divide by negative 3. Across the board. So I'm left with a positive y. Two negatives here are going to make a positive. I'm still going to leave it as a fraction, but positive 11 over 3. Two negatives make a positive, and that's 7 when I divide. So I'm going to go up here and start at 7. And I'm going up 11 over 3, which will put me way off the graph over here. So working backwards, it should end up down here somewhere. So I'm going down 11, and I'm going to go left 3. So I'm at 7. If I go to 0, that means I need to go 4 more to go down a total of 11. And then over 3. And that's the only other point I'm going to fit on this graph. And let's get the other one on there. Move my x. Can't put these together. Divide by 3. So it's a negative 2 thirds x for my slope. And it's a negative 6 for my intercept. So I'm going down to negative 6. And from there, it's down 2 over 3. And so if I continued it the other way and went up 2 over 3, that's going to be my point where these two lines cross. So right here is my answer. Lining it up with my x and my y. x is negative 3. And y is negative 4.